Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic. Today's topic is reducing release risk with AI-driven feature flag analytics. I'm Andy Grabner, and with me, I have Kyle Johnson, co-founder at Flexsmith. Hi, Kyle. Thank you so much for uh, doing this show with me today. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, we have a lot of content prepared, but really everything focuses around how we can better observe and analyze the impact of feature flagging. So to go right into what we have prepared for feature for our users, uh, we have these three sections. First of all, why feature flags, then feature flags in action, and then feature flag analytics in action. So most of this, as you can see, is going to be live demos. Now, before we kick off the live demo, Kyle, just to ask you, because for me, you are the expert on feature flagging. You work for Flexsmith, uh, a feature flag uh, organization. Also, uh, one of the supporters like Dynatrace on open feature, a, an open standard for feature flag uh, implementations for developers. Can you quickly tell me why people are looking into feature flags? Yeah, so obviously it's going to depend on uh, the uh, end applications use case, but for us, We've been using feature flags to build our own platform for the past six years. So for us, it's a massive safety net. So prior to this, you would get pull requests that would build up over time, stale code that's not reaching production. Mm -hmm. For us, at any point in time, we're able to merge work in progress code into production, which is like a massive safety net. And at any point in time, we're able to test in production. So testing in production is something we really believe in. So we're able to turn on feature flags for our individual developers, for our internal team, and test in production before the features reach the end user. That's awesome. And folks, if you are interested in more, there's a lot of documentation out there on the Flexsmith website, on the Dynatrace website. We'll point you to more content. Also check out the description of the video. There will be links as well. But now, as promised... I would say we go to the live demo. And I think, uh, Kyle, we'll start it off with you because you want to show us how feature flags look like and how you manage them in a tool like Flexsmith. Yeah, absolutely. I will share my screen. Uh, da -da -da. There we go. It's coming through. Perfect. Yeah. Brilliant. So... Um, as I've said, we've been using feature flags to pair out all of our features within Flagsmith. Every single new feature that you see within the Flagsmith dashboard is powered by feature flags. And more recently, we've enabled two integrations with Dynatrace. There are two parts of the puzzle here with feature flags. There are knowing when you've turned on a feature flag or an adjusted feature flag remote configuration. Uh, and then also there is what the end user is seeing. So the first integration here uh, is uh, enabling communication between the Flagsmith dashboard and Dynatrace. So essentially what happens here is when a user uh, enables a feature, we send that information to uh, Dynatrace as a deployment event. So that's a key sort of event of when something major happened. Um, the second part of the integration is uh, from the SDK side. So the real uh, user monitoring. So from Flagsmith's perspective, all it takes to do that is to say, enable Dynatrace is true when you initialize the Flagsmith uh, SDK. Okay, so we've been working hard uh, building a broken feature and releasing it to production over the past month. We intentionally released a broken feature that crashes the Flagsmith application intentionally, and we were able to do that with complete safety because that feature is behind the feature flag. And what I'm going to do now in this live demo is enable it in production for the Flagsmith internal team. So what I'm looking at now is the Flagsmith website project on app.flagsmith.com. And essentially what this is, is the project that manages the features that you can see within the Flagsmith dashboard. And I'm going to filter by demo features. Mm -hmm. And we can see this broken feature uh, item here. What I'm going to do, instead of enabling this feature for the whole of the production environment, which would be a very bad thing to do, I'm going to enable it for the Flagsmith internal team. So what I've done in advance and what how we use Flagsmith ourselves is we've created a segment of users that matches the Flagsmith internal team. So when a user logs into app.flagsmith.com, 
for my user, it picks up that my email address ends in dot uh, flagsmith.com. And that puts me into the Flagsmith team segment. And if I add a segment override for this broken feature and turn it on for the Flagsmith team, I will start seeing that feature in production. So what we can see now is this demo broken feature in the bottom left. So no one else within uh, Flagsmith would be able to see this. This is just the Flagsmith internal team. And as I said, this, this feature will break the Flagsmith application uh, for me. So I'm going to click on that now and we see an error. So uh, this is an example of having that safety net of a feature flag with a broken feature and testing it into production. So we've reached this point where uh, a feature that we've rolled out has uh, broken the application, but because we have this integration with Dynatrace, we can now observe uh, information about these errors. So I'm gonna hand over to you to see what reporting we get on this. Awesome. Thank you so much. And also thank you for being so brave in uh, really doing this uh, demo on your production environment. So the interesting thing here is it's kind of like inception. If you think of it, you are the feature flagging application, right? Where you manage the feature flags and you're using feature flags to manage the features of your feature flagging solution. So that was, that was really interesting. Well, um, we believe in it. We believe yeah. in releasing features into feature flags is the best practice. So we would be hypocritical if we didn't use our own platform. Very good point. So what I'm here, what I have here is now, this is your Dynatrace environment uh, that you use to monitor your Flagsmith application. So first of all, what I want to show you, I just refreshed the screen. And, um, you know, at the time of the recording today, like two minutes ago, this is part of the integration where you can see here, Kyle Johnson, that's you. You were enabling the broken feature for the Flagsmith team. So this is information that is sent over to Dynatrace. Where does this show up? For those of you that know Dynatrace, it does not only show up in these screens, in our entity screens. It also shows up on some of our dashboards, right? As as these um, um, uh, you know overlays, um, time marks or time ticks. And actually, I also want to focus on yesterday because yesterday we played around a little bit with it as well. So you can see we have been turning on and off this feature for a while, but it's really great to see this overview. Now, I want to show you a couple of use cases. The first use case is uh, Kyle. I'm now switching over to a view that is called the user session segmentation. This means I can actually see every single user. I would assume, Kyle, if somebody is exposed to a new feature, right? Maybe friends and family, or like in your case, you are within the team and something breaks, they would open up a support ticket or call you and say, hey, the feature doesn't work as expected. Um, Kyle, uh, in your application, can you remind me how do you uniquely identify users? Yeah, so what happens is when the user logs into the Flagsmith dashboard, we're identifying the user with the Dynatrace SDK, SDK as the internal user ID. Mm -hmm. And my internal user ID is 1965. 1965, so user tag, uh, I assume you... You you look uh you don't look that old so I don't think it's your date of birth or <laughs> no it's an auto incrementing ID it's not uh, okay. it's not my date of birth <laughs> okay so one of the things we can do here with Dynatrace really user monitoring because that was turned on we can see every single session that Kyle you did with your user ID now if I click on that user right I get a nice overview of uh, your experience that you had and you can see here we have a couple of of uh, of instances where you were clicking around. And uh, first of all, we get a an, an high level overview. How many sessions did you have in the last 24 hours? Because that's kind of my time frame here. But really what I'm interested in is now, let's pick one of these sessions. Let's pick the session that you had here where you experienced the problem. Dynatrace automatically detect that you had uh, an issue, that you had a bad user experience. Um, first of all, though, on the highlights up here on what we call the session details, we see, again, your user ID, what browser you used, your IP address, and everything like that. Session properties, Kyle, I think this is also part of the integration, correct? Yes, that's correct. So all of the Flagsmith traits and feature flags are sent over to Dynatrace as session properties. Perfect. And now if I scroll down, right, what I can really see here is I can see every single what we call user action that you did until you ended up with this an example error. That's what we saw earlier. 
Now, what I can do, I could actually start what we call session replay right from the, from the start and watch everything you did until it aired, but you did quite a bit. So what I rather want to do is I want to go back, you know, maybe a couple of seconds and click on session replay here. So what this now does, it gives me basically your view of the browser. You can actually click on, on play here. So what we see here is session replay. That means this is a session that we recorded yesterday, but I think you did pretty much the same demo, right? You were searching uh, for your different features. Then you were going through all the configuration uh, and you were explaining uh, the segmentation here. And then eventually you were enabling that feature flag. This should happen in a second. And then you have on the bottom left, like you just clicked in your live demo earlier, you clicked on that broken feature link and voila, you really ended up on this. So this is a perfect proof point that you were actually complaining for a good reason, not because as we saw you earlier doing it live, but also Dynatrace has captured this. We identified your unique user session and we know that you ended up here. We know that you were exposed to this feature flag. So all of this data is available. We have some additional information uh, I just want to show folks uh, that might not be uh, familiar with Dynatrace um, because besides failures, there might also be other things that can go wrong, like uh, images loading slow, uh, some other things that are breaking on the page because content couldn't be loaded. What you can do in Dynatrace here as well is your classical waterfall analysis, which means you can actually go in and really observe and see like a full waterfall breakdown on what in this case, Kyle had to download from uh, the backend, from all of the images and resources. And then you can even drill down further, right? You see every single request here. Now, what's more important for me now, first of all, Kyle, I know you complained for a good reason. You really had a problem. The question is, were you the only one that had this issue or not? And one of the things we have in Dynatrace, we have the capability of doing error analysis. Now, in your case, the feature flag was causing a JavaScript error. So what I can now do, I can go into the uh, user action analysis in the in the error analysis. I was again, I can pick different time frames. So I'm selecting here that time frame where uh, we played around yesterday with your session, and then on the bottom. And let me just um, quickly highlight this here. Right, I get to see uh, all of the JavaScript errors that came in in this particular time frame. Now I can go into filter for the JavaScript error. And then I get already the list that happened and example error. So I now get to see who actually, how many people or how many errors were thrown. And I can see this is really correlating with the feature flag turn on. Right? This is also really nice. I see it completely correlated. Now I can click on the example error and now I'm getting brought to a page that gives me an overview of how many users were actually in that time frame on that page that actually had the error. And I think that's that's really nice um, because we see, fortunately, there was only one user and there was your user that had the issue. And one thing that um, I might be, you now if I scroll down here, I could have also done this from the previous screen where we saw the visual replay for JavaScript errors. We also have uh, and capture the stack trace. So we show you here exactly where the error happens. Uh, we can even then upload. Um, now you can even see here at right, the source code. And the thing is, if you have uh, the uh, minified files, um, you can also upload, as you could see earlier, the um, uh, the mapping files. So all this is possible. I think, Kyle, this makes it really easy and sweet to to analyze broken features. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be able to see straight away what the issue is here. <laughs> yeah. So there's one. There's a couple of more things that I want to quickly show. So remember, we started here with the basic integration, you were sending problems uh, to, well, uh, not problems, but you were sending, turning on and off feature flags to Dynatrace. We then went into the analysis of individual user sessions. Uh, another thing that I would like to highlight here, because Kyle, I saw earlier that you have multiple feature flags that people can kind of turn on and turn off, right? I think so there's, there's one, I think it's called dark mode or light mode or something like that. Is that, am I correct? Yeah, so dark mode determines what uh, theme that the users see, uh, and, and that's essentially a uh, trait uh, and a feature flag within Flagsmith. Perfect. So what I can do now is because we're capturing the integration allows us on the Dynatrace side to capture 
which feature like trait was actually enabled with which value. So I can now actually go in and say, hey, I want to see the enable dark mode. How many people were, let's say, turning it on, right? So I can now go in and I can see in the last 24 hours, how many users were turning on dark mode. I can also obviously do the reverse, but if I want to run in an analytics like this, if I want to get some more statistics and metrics, then what we can also do is we can leverage what we call the user session query. So I crafted this already, but it's a really simple thing. It's like a select statement where I say, I want to select the number of users and I want to group them by the dark mode feature flag property that we've captured. And I want to focus this on the Flex Mid Demo app because maybe you have you know, multiple different apps that you're monitoring down there. Now, if I scroll down, I can see, and again, this is for the for the uh, last 24 hours time frame wise or last two hours, right? How many had the feature flag turned on with the value false, true? And I guess now it's like a default. What's default? Uh, so that would be defaulting to light mode. Light mode, awesome, right? And let's assume you are promoting um, a new feature flag and you, you give it to people and then you wanna see are people actually using it if they can actually turn it on themselves? Or if let's say somebody's rolling out a feature pack based on segmentation, they want to know how many people are really using it. We can also run now a query which says compare with previous time frame. Dynamic shift would basically just compare with the previous two hours. So I can see how many users are coming in and how does it change? How does the feature flag behavior change over time? And then we can do all sorts of things. You can then group by you know uh, feature flag and the impact of, let's say, user duration, how interactive users are, how many interactions they do with the page, how many people are failing, is the user experience going up or down? So these are all great use cases um, that we can do simply by monitoring your application that is using, in this case, Flexmith for feature flagging and using the Flexmith to Dynatrace integration to send the flag change event over, but also enriching the data we capture for every user with the feature flag trait information. With this, you can do more detailed diagnostics and analytics. Oh, did we miss anything, Kyle? Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, this is just mentioned, this is just the, the last bit of the puzzle for our release process because feature flags offer this massive safety net, but at some point or another, you have to release the feature to your end user. So from there, all you can do is observe if there are any sort of issues or uh, downgrading conversion or however you're measuring mm -hmm. the sort of impact of the feature flag. So this Dynatrace integration provides that missing part, like the the, the, the part where you actually roll the feature X production. So it's, it's, it's just great. Yeah, and you just remind me, right, from a user behavior perspective in Dynatrace, depending on what type of application you have, you may have certain conversion goals. Conversion could be something classic like an e-commerce if somebody puts something in a shopping cart or then really buys it and finishes the purchase. But you know, conversion goals are also true for any other back office application. If you have a system where you enable your engineers or your employees to do self-service, you can say, hey, a conversion goal would be if people actually I don't know, open up an internal ticket for to request a certain service. So you can you can also now take all of this user behavior data and also then analyze it based on feature flags. So if you want to learn more, if anyone wants to learn more, let me just uh, put this in here uh, as a final slide. Uh, we have some additional resources. The QR codes are here, but also the links to these two pages will also be in the description of this video. So on the one side, Kyle left, that is your documentation, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Awesome, so uh, we have documentation on how to really set up that integration. And then on the right, we have some additional videos that we've recorded. Uh, one of my colleagues is also very active in the feature flagging space. So check out what else you can do with Dynatrace and feature flagging. And with this, Kyle, I wanna say thank you so much. This was awesome and I'm looking forward to more education and enablement for the whole community around best practices on feature flagging. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for having me.